Hey everybody. So today we're going to take a look at something a little bit different. This is a tubular lock. Um, and today the, the video isn't going to be so much about the lock itself as the tools that we use to uh, pick these. Because tubular locks, while they use the same basic principles as a pin tumbler uh, lock, as a more traditional pin tumbler lock, uh, instead of having their, uh, their pins laid out all in a row, like that, in a straight line, uh, they're arranged in a circle. And so you get a key that looks like this instead of like this. Uh, and it just has a series of little cuts along the rim of it so that when you insert it into the lock, it turns those little cuts just push the pins to the correct depth instead of uh, raising or lowering them uh, vertically. And I've got two different types of tools, or two very slightly different tools here. Uh, this one is more common in the US. I believe it's made by Southern Specialties, but uh, South Ord and a bunch of other people uh, make essentially the same design. Uh, Inside this little uh, hollow tube, there is a uh, large pin or, or uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, and that engages with this notch on the core of the plug of the lock uh, to provide tension, and it also has a series of little uh, sort of flat wire uh, feelers. and those correspond with the position of the pins inside the lock. And so what we do is, to get started is we push the feelers all the way out and we get a handy flat surface and we push against them until they're all lined up with the face of the uh, body of the pick and that's called zeroing and then we tighten this uh, retaining ring as much as we can and then we back it off just a tiny bit and hopefully that will provide enough tension to keep these feelers uh, from only uh, rising when the pin is giving them actual resistance. So when we're done, we're going to line up that little post with the notch in the plug of the lock, insert it, and wiggle it back and forth like that and hopefully we should be seeing some of these uh, feelers rising. Now let's take a look at our progress. So we're getting a very very tiny bit of movement there if you know this thing would focus so you could actually see clearly but uh, so obviously we're locked down just a little bit too much, so we're going to lighten up again. Just a little tiny couple of degrees, and then we're going to uh, reinsert the tool. There we go. Push it in and turn it back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth, wiggling it around. And there we go. The lock is now open. None of the pins are giving excessive resistance. And we take it out and we twist this nut all the way down because now, if uh, again this will focus, you should now see that some of those feelers have dropped down, some stayed uh, at the zero position some raised just a little bit, but all of those uh, feelers are now going to correspond with the cuts on the original key. So you can just see there, same depth, and if we flip them around, you can see all the same depths. So these picks are uh, basically a self-impressioning uh, tool because when, once you have it, uh, once you have the lock picked and all of these feelers are down at the right height, 
they'll match exactly with the actual key that goes to that lock. So if you're a locksmith and someone has uh, lost the key to their tubular lock, you can get a decoder and read those depths and cut a new key for them. Or uh, you can just keep going if you're in a facility where you have a whole bunch of uh, locks that are all keyed alike. You can just walk down the row of vending machines or padlocks or whatever it is and just try this out and it'll keep working just like a key every time. You can walk away for hours or days and as long as you don't mess with the settings on these feelers, uh, it'll keep working just like the real key. Uh, now we have a similar but slightly different tool uh, from uh, Asia. This one is called Huck. Uh, it comes in a set of three uh, where they have slightly different diameters because there are slightly different sizes of these. Uh, now all of these tools right now are set up and are designed to work on seven pin locks. There are eight and ten pin tubular locks, uh, but I don't have any of those on hand to show you. But this works uh, essentially the same way, except instead of having that big knurled ring uh, to hold everything down, it has this uh, little uh, hex screw, and you use an Allen key. So right now it's locked down all the way. We're just going to back that off a tiny bit, and we're going to uh, line up this painted arrow because unlike the tool that I showed you just now, uh, this does not have a, an index pin to help you tension. Just that arrow tells you where the notch should be. And so you're going to line that up, and you're just going to wiggle it around like this in a sort of circular motion. And as long as you didn't tighten that up too much, the feelers should start uh, rising up, and now you can resume that uh, sort of side-to-side -side wiggle that uh, I was doing with the first tool. And wiggle it back and forth, back and forth, just keep doing that. Now let's take a look. How's it going? Uh, we might have it still a little bit too tight, so we're going to back off just another degree or two. Insert. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Because what you're doing, uh, when, you, when you wiggle it back and forth like this, what happens is that the pins bind on each side where you stop and they force the the feeler slightly higher as the spring pushes up on them. So how are we doing? Getting there. Okay, we're still a bit too tight. up just a bit. Usually this tool actually uh, works pretty quickly, but going on nine minutes here, so make this a bit easier. Hopefully, be able to show you this thing actually working correctly. Let's jiggle it around, and as those pins bind and unbind, come on. All right, I'm going to re-zero this guy. One more time. Yeah, with these huck tools, because there isn't that indexing pin, 
uh, in order to get it started, you need to uh, wiggle it like this rather than uh, actually doing side to side tensioning the core. What you're really using is you're bouncing the pins up and down, and as the spring pushes back against them, it will raise the feelers. So, how are we doing? Ugh. Come on, man. Work with me here. Seeing some movement, but not enough. And there we go. Got it open. So, you know, this is very much uh, trial and error sort of thing. Uh, but now, again, that we have it picked, we're going to just tighten this all the way up, tight as it goes. And now we can keep coming back to that same lock. Keep using it like a key. So, uh, until next time, have fun, happy picking, and stay safe.